Hello, this is Xavier Sockington, and today we're going to do a shiny button tutorial. Now, I already know what you're thinking. There are so many shiny button tutorials out there. I decided to do this just because, you know, I was going through and looking at some of them, and they kind of skim over some of the reasons behind what you're doing. So I kind of wanted to take some time, show you why you're doing the different steps, and to show you basically how to create one template that you can reuse over and over and over for each button that you're doing, because essentially, creating Creating buttons isn't the most fun thing for a website. I just just created xdtutorials.com and made a ton of different buttons, and it just it's kind of a time-consuming task. So just wanted to show you some of the tips and tricks that I learned um, from going through that. So today we're going to go over a shiny button at the very end of it. It's going to look something like this. I put it on a gray background just so you can kind of see um, the different edges and things like that. The buttons are going to be shiny as well as have the appearance of being a little bit rounded so I'm going to create a brand new image the image size actually doesn't matter we can auto crop the image at the very end I just like to use you know 512 or 513 by 513 the first decision that you need to make is the shape of your button so I'm just gonna go with a rectangle you're gonna notice in my tool options I've checked off rounded corners and my radius is about 50 here that's just gonna give me a rounded corner square um, you're gonna just see how the edges are rounded here you can dial that up uh, to make a more or less rounded corners type of a thing Okay. The other thing that I'm going to do in my tool options here, you see my size, how it says 274 by 274. I got lucky and I drew a perfect square. Um, but you can always change the size in here so that you can get a perfect square. Or if you're looking for a, a 2 to 1 rectangle, you can set the size right in there so you're not monkeying with changing the size of your square. So my first step is to actually create the background of the button. We're going to grab a gradient. We're using a gradient because we want essentially that curved effect of the button. So I'm going to create two, or I'm going to select two highly contrastable colors. So I'm going to grab a yellow for my foreground, and then I'm going to grab a red here. Now my blend tool, I'm going to go to my tool options again, and I'm going to select this foreground to background HSV, which is just going to give me a nice blend between them. And my goal when I'm creating this blend is to get about the middle line here. You see how there's kind of this bright line, or you can kind of see the change from the red to the yellow right in the middle. That's kind of my goal right there, just to get again that curved effect. From here what I'm going to do is I'm going to auto crop my layer. It's going to give me a layer just around my background and then I'm going to select my alignment tool and I'm going to align it so that it's perfectly in the center of the image. Now I'm doing that for my other steps um, in the future. Now I have my background in the very center of my image so when I add different button templates and you know my different uh, layers all I need to do is center them and they're going to appear right where they're supposed to so I don't have to manually move them around on the screen. So, um, so there's my background. I'm going to create the shininess on the top of the layer. I'm going to create a new layer. You know, let's just call this shiny transparency. Okay. I'm going to do alpha to selection on my background. That's going to give me an active selection on my background. I'm going to click on my rectangle select tool and then click in the center of the selection. That's going to give me the options to edit this selection here. And I'm just going to make it a little smaller on the corners here and just something like that it doesn't need to be perfect because if we, again after we do this we can just center it and get it to where we want it to be okay. so back to my colors I'm going to select my foreground background color if you click right here you're just gonna get a black and white we actually flip them around I'm gonna click on my blend tool my gradient, I'm going to do foreground to transparent. I'm just going to make sure that my shiny layer is selected. And I'm just going to do one swipe, just like here. If you don't think that this is bright enough, you can always duplicate the later layer later on and just kind of, you know, make it darker or lighter or whatever you want to do. Okay. Again, I'm going to auto crop this layer. And I'm just going to center it horizontally. It looked like it was pretty much already there. Okay. 
My next step is to make kind of the darker borders around the button. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm just going to call it dark border if I can spell. Now again I'm going to use that background as my selection. I'm going to right click on background, do alpha to selection. I'm going to shrink it about oh five pixels or so. Okay. I'm going to invert the selection. So now the background here is selected. And then my last step is I'm going to feather it. I'm going to hit OK. Make sure my dark border is selected. Change my color to black. And I'm going to fill it in here. Now I want to remove all this black from my image. So again, I'm going to right click on my background, do alpha to selection, do select invert. And I'm going to, you know, delete that background. Got to click on my border here and delete that background. Okay. So now I have an edge around. Again, you can make that darker or lighter just by playing with the opacity. And as always, I'm going to do layer, auto crop layer, and it's already centered, I know. So my last step is to actually add in my icons. I'm going to put this on my website here, xdtutorials.com, so that you can download all these different icons. It doesn't make sense to make it go and find them like I had to. So um, I'm just going to copy my Twitter. And I'm going to paste it. Create a new layer out of it. And I'm going to move this layer down below the dark border and change the overlay mode or the mode to overlay and you can play with the settings to make it darker or lighter. So that essentially is your shiny border. Again with these icons all you need to do is click on them. Actually I have to remove the layers here so you can actually click on them and just center them and now you know that they're perfectly centered in the middle of your button. So from here, all I'd have to do is do image, auto crop image, save it as an XC, or you know, save it as your file format that you want, and you have a button. Hopefully this was helpful for you. If it was, or if you liked it, feel free to like the video, subscribe, uh, or you can always send me a comment. I'm looking for ideas of tutorials that you really want, so just send me an email at Xavier at xdtutorials.com. Let me know what type of tutorials that you're really looking for. Um, we're going to be putting a lot more tutorials on, on the channel here in the upcoming weeks. So, Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Have a great day.